In wildlife photography, getting a clean image is largely coveted. A noiseless image allows for less distraction away from the subject and a more pleasing aesthetic to the eye. And today, I'm going to be showing you two programs that allow you to achieve low noise in your images, regardless of what camera you are using. Quickly, before I show you this hack, it's important to note that being aware of your camera's noise handling capabilities is a great place to start. No, you don't have to purchase the most expensive gear to fix noise in your images, but it does get drastically easier with nicer cameras. I'd recommend going out into the field, testing out the same shot at multiple different ISO levels, then coming back home and blowing them up on a big screen to see what you are comfortable with. My first camera I ever owned, I never really felt that comfortable going higher than 1600 ISO. But now I'll go up to 6400 ISO comfortably, so this range can vary a lot between your gear. So this is where the magic happens in Topaz Denoise AI. I can take an image like this and immediately clean it up almost flawlessly. But if you try to touch it up in Topaz Denoise without the right settings, you might not actually find yourself liking the results. So there are some specific settings that I'd highly recommend to use if you want to make it look good. So let's hop into those. So I've selected my image in Topaz Denoise AI, and it's this image that we have here of a cattle egret and its baby. So what we're gonna wanna do is it's pretty noisy because it was shot in a really dark scenario. So we're gonna wanna clean up the noise in this image without losing sharpness and actually enhance the sharpness just a tad bit on the actual subject. So you can see here on Topaz Denoise, you have a bunch of different settings. You have low light, severe noise, raw, clear, standard, so on and so forth. And then you have model prefer preferences below it. What I'd recommend if you aren't familiar with these settings, low light I found often makes it very patchy, very kind of clumpy in the noise. And unless you're in incredibly low light settings, it's just not the best option for you, I'd say. So what I'd recommend is actually going to something more like clear. Severe noise is again for those really severe situations. Standard, I feel like doesn't really do enough typically for me in most scenarios, but AI clear is absolutely phenomenal. It really helps to just remove the background as much as possible while bringing that subject out a little bit more and sharpening it up just ever so slightly. You can see that it has removed noise down here. You have medium, low, high. You have enhanced sharpness, low and high. Typically what I find myself liking is on the high setting for remove noise. That's the whole purpose of why it's in here. And then usually on the enhanced sharpness, I put low as opposed to high. Occasionally I might do high, but low typically gives me a little bit more of what I want. So let's also pull it up to a side by side and zoom to fit. Sorry, not zoom to fit. Let's zoom to a hundred. Oh, you can see that difference. And Let's see it update, and there you go. So you can notice it's retaining quite a bit of feather detail and beak detail, but it's getting a really nice smooth background. Notice that background and how smooth it's getting now. So it looks really good in my opinion. If we zoom out, you'll even be able to notice it a little bit more and check out that difference right there. That is just an insane difference before and after. I don't know how really visible this is on YouTube because YouTube is gonna compress it and the video quality is gonna be lowered a lot, but it's a huge difference, a night and day difference in the noise. Um, you just get such a cleaner image and it feels a little bit sharper and more prominent on the actual subjects themselves. Let's actually zoom in to, let's zoom into the actual bird itself or the baby bird, I should say. And let's check out this and show you just how this part looks before and after. This is really impressive. See how all the noise just got cleaned up around it and it still retained a lot of that detail in the actual subject. It's phenomenal, really, really incredible. So I love Topaz Denoise. There are some situations in which I found that Topaz Denoise is not the best solution, however. There is a program that works even better in the right situations and that's Topaz's Sharpen AI program. In Sharpen AI, the program is not working to only achieve a noiseless image, but it's also working to achieve incredible subject to background separation. Therefore, it works to really stand out the subject while blurring the background dramatically. When I discovered this hack, it really changed the way that I use this program. So we have an image here of a red winged blackbird and this whole image, I really wanna make it look clean. So what we're gonna do is we are going to, we're going to do out of focus, very blurry. Again, this really helps to stand out the subject without losing any of the detail in the subject specifically and while getting the background really blurry. So you'll notice that when I do this, it actually starts to look really good. And let's actually, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out some of the suppressed noise. 
Something else that's really cool about all these Topaz programs is you can actually select um, subjects. And so it can auto select subjects in a case like this, or in a different case, you can actually manually select them. Custom and then refine. And then what you can do from here is you can add what you want, you can subtract what you don't want. So let's say I didn't want to sharpen this bird, for example. I can work on masking that out. You have a brush, all of that good stuff that you can do there. You can update it, and now the mask will apply as you see fit. Again, though, look at the noise difference. So if I go up here, up top again, and then I just show the difference between the noise here and what it winds up processing to, it just totally removes the noise. So it's super awesome, and Sharpen is a really good program for denoising. It does a super effective job of just getting a complete blur in your backgrounds. So you might be thinking, well, why would I use Topaz Denoise if Topaz Sharpen does a better job of denoising and it helps sharpen subjects? Well, there is a downside to using Topaz Sharpen in some situations, however. Let's go back to this image of the snowy egret with the baby. When I took this shot, I tacked focus perfectly and nailed the detail on the subject. So when I take it into Topaz Sharpen, while it is true that the background gets nice and blurred and denoised, you'll notice that the image gets overly sharp and adds chromatic aberration into it. You can get rid of it by changing it to other modes in Sharpen AI. However, this defeats the purpose of using Sharpen over denoise as out of focus blurry is really the best setting in Sharpen AI that really helps to denoise images. This isn't the only image that this happens on either. In my images, I find very often that if they are shot already with perfect focus, I can't use Sharpen AI on them without causing some over sharpening. Or I can try to mask out the bird like I showed you there, but in a case like this, Denoise seems to do the best job in these scenarios anyways, which often in these scenarios where I'm getting the subjects perfectly sharp, usually those images were shot in better conditions anyways, where less severe noise correction is needed, and I tacked focus well because of the nice conditions. Before I explain my thought process, my link below contains a 15% off, so don't forget to use it to receive your discount if you wind up purchasing these programs today. Through my experience of using Topaz Denoise and Sharpen for over a year now, I found that Denoise tends to be the best option to use on photos that are taken in non-ideal noise conditions when I've tacked focus sharply on the subject. However, in more extreme and horrible noise conditions and when I found slightly missed focus, I found that Sharpen AI seems to be the winner. I'd highly recommend purchasing both, as they have been essential tools in my editing workflow. However, if you have to choose one, choose whichever situation you believe you encounter more of. Again, if you're interested in purchasing Topaz Denoise AI or Sharpen AI for yourself, I'd greatly appreciate if you use my affiliate link below. It literally saves you 15% off and saves your money while helping support this channel, so there's no downside to it. I hope this workshop helps your noisy images, and I'll see you guys next time.